Hey, you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to talk about a piece that's in my collection. And people always ask me, they said, man, do you collect a lot of things? And I, I tell them, nope. When I started out, I had to sell everything I had to pay the bills and uh, to pay the car note and the house note and the insurance and all that stuff. And I wasn't able to collect anything. The last few years, I've been able to put just a few things back. And there are a lot of times stuff that when I first got into it, man, I loved. There was, when I first got into Civil War artifacts in the, uh, around 1990, there was a book that had come out and I would buy all the books I could that had a lot of pictures because I don't read very well, but I love to look at cool pictures of artifacts. There was one that, this book, that book there, uh, Historic Treasures of the American Civil War by William Spadale, Speedell. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, in that book, I remember one of the, it's one of the first books that I ever got. And I remember flipping through it and there was one picture in it that really stuck out in my mind. It was this picture. And this picture came into focus when I realized who it was. One of the first, uh, really pioneer collectors of Civil War artillery shells, uh, was Tom Dickey. And this is Tom Dickey. And he was down in Georgia and had just an unbelievable, artillery collection. A lot of it is in the uh, Atlanta History uh, Center. You can go by there and still see some of the stuff that was his. It was just unbelievable. And I never got to meet him. He passed away shortly before I got into it, but he was at the time the guy that everybody still talked about. And <laughs> I would have loved to have met him. But this picture shows him coming back in his station wagon. Check the station wagon out. And he's got these huge artillery shells beside him. And I thought, holy cow, those are so cool. I would love to have one of those. And that was before I knew what it was, what it was fired out of, where it came from or anything. It's like, that is way cool. And so I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of them over the years because I love them. I buy them when, they, when I get a chance to. Uh, and this one I bought a little while back and put in my collection just because, look at it. It's cool. It's big as I am. <laughs> it's 83 pounds worth of artillery shell. 83 pounds. Can you imagine that flying through the air? 83 pounds of artillery. And uh, this is believed to be one of the ones that uh, Mr. Dickey dug at the place where most of them come from. It's private property now, you can't hunt it. Uh, it's island number 10 on the Mississippi River. And it's island number 10, it sits in a very tight turn up uh, near New Madrid. And it was a very important thing because it had such a tight turn, all the boats that went up and down the Mississippi River had to go through that real tight turn. So the Union Navy uh, made some uh, naval ships. They were some ironclads and they're called city class. They're city class gunboats. And they made uh, six of them, they, including the Cairo. If you go down to Vicksburg, they raised the Cairo out of the Yazoo River and put it on display in the museum uh, there. It's one of the coolest places you'll ever go if you haven't ever been. But on that boat, it has some of the guns like fired this shell. Most of them were fired at the Confederates sitting on island number 10. Those guys on island number 10 were firing out towards the gunboats and they were firing one of the rarest shells you'll ever see. They were fired some of those 6.4 inch diameter archers, Confederate archers. Had one over the years, always thought I'd get another one. Nope, never seen another one for sale. Uh, but I've been fortunate enough to have a few of these. This one, it's pretty, 83 pounds, that big. To put it in perspective, put the little book down. Uh, this, is what the regular field size dyer looks like. This is how big this one is. So it's like steroids uh, and a half on these. They, 83 pounds, doesn't sound uh, like one you wanna be carrying around very often, but it's so cool. And there's Mr. Dickey sitting there with a whole pile of them that he, they dug. He said he dug, I think it was 80 or 100 of them out of there back in the day. They fired these at Island Number 10 from February 28th to April 8th, 1862. So they were dropping shells in there a lot. And these are referred to as duds because they didn't go off. 
why it wouldn't go off? And I'll, I'll be glad to tell you, there was a real good reason. These are rifle shells. And if you notice, check out the rifling on this one. It's really deep in that, uh, this is called the sabot. The part that actually takes the rifling of the gun is called the sabot or a sabot. Uh, if you were very good at English, I wasn't, so it's a sabot. Uh, that's what makes it spin. And it is lead, which is softer than the iron of the shell, <clears throat> which is why they don't do iron all the way down. The lead takes the rifling and helps it spin and be more accurate. Bad thing is, it seals it completely off when the bottom, which is dished in like this, when that expands, it catches all of the rifling. But if it catches all the rifling, uh, the flame from the cannon blast doesn't have time and ability to reach it all the way up to the fuse. These used a wooden fuse holder with a, uh, with a time fuse in the middle of it it didn't have time to get up there and light that. So basically, you're firing a solid shot, something that's just gonna have to knock something down if it's gonna do any damage uh, or specifically hit somebody just dead on. So the, what did they do? They, had, they figured out pretty soon that they weren't working, so they would try to notch the lead on the bottom of these. This one has all the rifling, the full sabot, which is why I bought it and kept it, because you can see here, it's got the rifling all the way around. It's a neat shell. It's in great shape. Uh, I like to think that it's one that Mr. Dicky dug, even if he didn't. I hope he did. Uh, but it's just a cool shell, huge, from a neat location, island number 10. Uh, came off of one of those six uh, city class gunboats. <laughs> they had a nickname, and they were called Pook Turtles, P-O-O-K Turtles, because they kind of do look like a turtle <laughs> when you look at the pictures of them. Uh, fired from a rifled 42 pounder uh, in those city class boats, which they were made actually at, uh, uh, they say they were finished up in around Cairo in uh, Illinois. The shells themselves, you don't see them many places besides uh, Island Number 10. You do see some from Vicksburg and Grand Gulf. That's because those boats from up there worked their way down to around Vicksburg, Yazoo River where uh, the Cairo sank. But they're 14 inches tall, 83 pounds, heavy. And this one's nice. I like it when you can see that rifling out of the cannon. Uh, just something, and they're a neat, most of the ones you see today, you can buy for under $1,000. And I know $1,000 is a lot of money, but that's a lot of cool. That's an awful lot of cool. Hell, keep going up. Going to be cheaper than a dozen eggs at the Walmart. Uh, sorry, I took a tangent. I went to buy eggs this morning and said, I'm just going to quit eating. But as you can see, that ain't going to happen. Uh, but the, you can find them now. Uh, and they're usually under $1,000. And that's a lot of history. Uh, great history. And so go on to uh, ShilohRelics.com. You can't see this one. But you can see this one. This one's for sale as of right now. And it can be in your collection as soon as you run that credit card through. And I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great time. Uh, it's graduation time here in Hardin County. I was uh, fortunate enough to watch a lot of them. And it was a, it was a, neat, uh, a neat thing. My little grandson uh, got his award yesterday. And it's just kind of cool to watch the kids with all... Uh, all their excitement about being grown and they have no idea uh, being grown is a whole lot of responsibility and a whole lot of very little thanks. So it's just nice to see the uh, enjoyment. So if you, uh, I don't know why I, why I took that tangent, but I hope that you guys are well. I hope everything goes well for you. Thank you for watching these. Man, you guys have made a hell of a difference in my life. Uh, the encouraging words that people say about them. I had a guy call today, never ordered before ordered his uh, first sword from us and uh, he said, I sure do like them videos. And I said, man, I sure do like hearing that because it makes a fella feel good. I hope that you guys are well. Thank you again for watching these. Share them if you would, like them if you would, because uh, I, I use all the watchers, viewers, and customers I can get. Never hurts to have a hand up. I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you later. Love y'all.